Great morning, great morning. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures. It's early in the morning. And the Bible talks about those who seek Him early. So we're seeking Him early. And today we're going to talk a little bit about a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And we're going to take our scripture thought from the book of Mark. And the Mark, the uh, second chapter. And then um, we're going to look at the fact that Mark, this, this particular incident is recorded in Matthews and Luke. But we're going to pick it up, up from the uh, book of Mark. Because Mark uh, is the one that flies the banner of the ox. And meaning he's the burden bearer, a heavy load carrier, which we see from the par from the story that's recorded in Mark that this particular man, friends, was there to help him. And so we're going to talk about it from there because in, in the times when we go through various things, we need to have someone who can stick with us, somebody who will be there. And there's a scripture that talks about one that sticks closer than a brother. And that is the Lord himself. And so we're thanking uh, God for this uh, example, the man with palsy being healed. And he couldn't get himself to the Lord, but he had some friends. That's, he had some friends. And a lot of times, uh, a lot of times we uh, look for help from different directions. But we want to thank God for the friends that he allowed to come in our lives that will be there in the troubling times and hard times. And, and if we don't find anybody on this side of eternity, the Lord himself is a, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And that, um, that is coming out of Proverbs. So we're going to read that too. And we're going to sing the song, um, a couple of songs, okay? Now let's uh, pray. Father, we thank and praise you for this day which you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for keeping our minds, O oh God, and our heart to know that you are there and you can hear and you can see. Listening to so many people, O oh God, are going through troubling times, troubling waters. Lord God, we thank you for this word, hallelujah, that will minister to our very souls this morning, Father. In their body, of course, you're even all over this world, Lord God, there's so many uh, are, are out in troubling times. And that, that reminds me when the storms of life are raging, Lord God, how to stand by me. That song coming to mind, Lord God. And there's a lot of people going through things. And all of us, you said, in this world will have trouble. We thank and praise you that we do have a friend that stick closer than a brother. We thank you for your power and, and grace manifesting in us and through us as we yield to your body, soul, and spirit. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, and then the storm, when the storms of life are raging, stand by me, stand by me. And that's, that's a song. Um, uh, and there's a couple of songs I want to sing, but this particular one is coming while I'm praying. Um, when the storms of life are raging, stand by me. Uh, and so we need to know in our hearts and minds that we will not be alone in the time of trouble because God himself has promised to be a refuge a fortress, a, a, a high tower, hallelujah, that we can run to for refuge. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And those who keep their mind on him, we learned the other day, he will keep us in perfect peace if we keep our mind. So in the midst of the storm, we have to learn how to trust God. And so um, the song that came to me, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Hallelujah. That's the song. And uh, it's the regular hymnal. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. And that carrying everything to prayer made me think about this particular scripture in Mark. Because the person could not go uh, uh, to God himself, but he had people to carry him. And so now we may not physically see Christ, but we can carry everything to God in prayer. We can carry it. And I got on my knees and carried a couple of issues that I asked God to, as I was talking to the Lord, as I was um, carrying some issues to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. It came to me about uh, bitterness. And, and that, that stood out in my prayer about bitterness. The, the bitter waters are turning into sweet. 
So we're going to deal with it from that perspective. Because when you go through various things, life can become bitter. But God can turn the bitter waters into sweet waters. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Which is going to come out of the book of Exodus. How God can turn the situation around for us. Because we do have a friend in Jesus. And all of our sins and griefs to bear. Hallelujah. And we can take everything to God in prayer. Okay, that's a, one of those hymnals. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs he bears. What a privilege to carry, hallelujah, everything to God in prayer. So we are in um, Mark, the set, and the reason Mark I like, because Mark, as I told you, is flies the banner of the ox. And the ox is considered the burden bearer. And uh, this particular one here is going to help us to see that Christ is the one who would bear us. He takes us, he's our mediator forever. He is our mediator and our high priest forever. He always taking us. Even it says when we don't know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit prays for us, making intercessions for us. So we know what this ox and the burden bearer is because God is always bearing us. He's bearing us when we can't go any further. He carries us, okay? He's always there. Thank you, Jesus. And this parable is uh, the palsy man, uh, Mark, the second chapter, begins in verse 1. And again, he entered in Capernaum uh, after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. It was noise that he was in the house. Thank you, Jesus. And always some people say, you know, whatever you need is in the house. And it doesn't just mean the physical house. It means the spiritual house. Everything we need, Christ is in there. He is right there. We are, the Bible said we are complete. Everything we need to pertain to righteousness, God has given to us. So now that we're in the household of faith, we're in the body of Christ. Everything we need is in the house. And that means it's in Christ. And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. Uh, and that's another thing talking about. There was no room for him in the end. And we make room for him in our heart. And there was no room to receive, receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. He preached to them the good news, the gospel. Hallelujah. He began to give them the word of God because the word of God is life and light. Thank you, Jesus. His word of God is food for the, for the hungry soul. It's water for the thirsty. And that's what we're going to see here about the water. We're going to go to that too. Because he is the water when we're thirsty. Hallelujah, in the times of trouble. And they came unto him bringing, it says, um, and straight where many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came, they came unto him bringing one sick of the palsy, which was bore on four. So four people of his four friends was carrying another friend. And when they could not come nigh unto him, for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when he, when they had broken up the roof, they done tore up the man's roof. Whoever roof it was, they done tore it up. We said, we got to get our friend to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy laid. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, Thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Now, the Bible said they're talking in their hearts. And what they said, why does this man thus speak blasphemy? So right in the midst of the congregation, when the Lord is speaking, somebody in their heart is saying, that ain't right. How, how, I, how could this man say uh, that their uh, your sins be forgiven? So even though the preach word is coming, because he said he's teaching them. He is teaching them and they in their heart is saying, uh, uh, <clears throat> there was their scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Then we tell God knows our hearts. Okay, we're sitting here and he says, I don't believe that. You ain't saying it out loud, but God can hear it loud. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? 
You ever hear the word of God and, and, and something the scripture is saying and you're like, I don't believe that. But God hear that. He hear what you're saying. Okay. Who can forgive sins but, but only God? So now Jesus, now you could so many times when you see Jesus, he'll answer not audible uh, questions, questions that came up in the mind and in the heart of people. He answered them because he, again, then that's when the disciples said, oh, now we know he truly come from God. He know our thoughts, so. y'all. Okay. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reason within themselves. Jesus perceived in his spirit because Jesus is baptized by John with the Holy Spirit without measure. He said he was full of the Holy Ghost. Okay. His, he was born of the Holy Ghost. And now as a man, he, he is now, uh, when he went to the river of Jordan, the Holy Ghost came upon him and remained on him. And he was full of the Holy Ghost. Because now the Holy Ghost is now in this uh, vessel of clay. Thank you, Jesus. Birth by the Holy Ghost in the Virgin. But now the Holy Ghost has, is dwelling in him, full of the Holy Ghost. It says without measure. Okay. And so now he, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they... So reason within themselves, and he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Why are you thinking this in your heart? Why are you thinking this? Okay, what's wrong with you? Okay, why reason this in your hearts? Whether it is easy to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk, but that they that, but that ye may know that the Son of Man, who is in this clay vessel, okay, uh, the Son of Man, which you know from the Son of David, through the tribes of Judah, thank you, Jesus, the lion, the ox, the eagle, uh, the Son of Man, which is Luke flies that banner. It's Ma Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And uh, Mark is the one that's got the ox banner. And Luke is flying the... the you know those banners in the Old Testament, right? The four banners that Israel marched across, around. He, they had the, the banners on the, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, tribe of Judah, and there was three tribes under that banner. And then they had the tribes of, of uh, um, the ox. There was three tribes, and there was a, the son of man, and there was uh, three tribes, and then the eagle, and it was, they, they made a cross, okay? Okay, now he's saying, you shall know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins. And he said to the sick, Okay, Jesus said to the sick with the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed and go thy way unto thy house. And immediately he arose up on the bed and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never saw it on this fashion. We've never seen this happen, okay? Tying sin with uh, the, the palsy, okay, and saying your sins are forgiven. So we, when I thought about this, I thought about um, the the song "What a Friend" because the friends brought him there, and God is closer, sticks closer than a than a, a brother. He's a friend that sticks closer, which we're gonna go to Proverbs, because God is our burden bearer. He carries us. Thank you, Jesus. I was thinking about Lucretia. He carries me. He carries me, Lucretia Campbell, which she had an opportunity in her lifespan to to have a few uh, interactions with her through Freedom Temple. And uh, but God, she always says He carries me. He covers. He covers me, and He carries me. She always began to worship God and the fact that He was covering her and carrying her. So, you know, we had a few conversations. But this scripture tells us that there, He is a friend. God is a friend. Looking at this story in Mark, who bears and carries us. He carries us. Thank you, Jesus. Now, right there, your heart has to be touched. You know that God will carry you. Thank you. He will carry you, and he is closer. So, Proverbs 18, 24. Um, let's go. Eighteen Proverbs, eighteen. I'm in Psalms. I'm reading Psalms when I need Proverbs because I'm looking at the scriptures. So that doesn't make, it's not what I'm thinking. So we're going to Proverbs eighteen twenty four. But the thought this morning is, in the time of trouble, God Himself, the Lord, the Son of Man, thank you, Jesus, 
the burden bearer, hallelujah, the heavy load carer will carry us. Thank you, Jesus. He carries us as our intercessor, our mediator, as Job said, the days man. He carries us. He stands when we are in trouble. In the times of trouble, he is right there. Proverbs 18, 24. And it says, I'm going to go back up a little bit. Let's go back up to 18, verses 21 to 24. Uh, a man, okay, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. The poor uses in entreaties, but the rich answers roughly. So the poor is kind of careful what they say. But the rich answers roughly. Then he says, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. A man who has friends must show himself friendly. So apparently the man with the palsy, he had really, he had connected with four people in his life. And then it says, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than, the bro than a brother, which that friend is Jesus. We have a friend in Jesus. Bible tells us that God called Abraham my friend, okay? He even told his disciples that, that his friends, when they know, because a servant doesn't know, but he says, you are, you are my friends, okay? And that's what Jesus said to his disciples. You are now my friends, and I will tell you the little secret things that you don't tell uh, your servant or those who are just working for you, but those who are friends. So this friendship thing is important. Because you know, this made me think about not only Abraham was a friend, God called Abraham a friend, but he even told his disciples, you are, you are my, you're no longer my servants, okay, that you are my friends, okay, we need to get that scripture too. Because God, we can come close to God, that God says that you are my friends now, you are my friends now, we want to be friends because we, because we see what happens with friends. When you have trouble, uh, then the friends will take you and make sure that you get uh, yourself together, okay? They're not just going to leave you in your condition. Thank you, Jesus. You are my friends, okay? That's that's the scripture. I'm going to look that up because that's what Jesus told to his disciples. You are my friends. Thank you. I'm going to look that up, okay? And there's a lot of scripture about, and we see in God in different levels. You are my friends, says the Lord. Um, Jesus said, and I want to read that too. Jesus said, you are, you are my friends. And the reason we need to know about this friendship, is, uh, because, it's in, and it's in John 15. I need to pick up on this because, see, we're looking for the deep things of God. In Christ, clearly, we see these people as friends, and we see the one that stick closer than a brother, and we're going to see in John uh, 15, 14. We're going back to the New Testament. The reason we have to see this in form, remember your mind and your conscience and your memory is, is forming imagination, is forming things inside of you. It's changing and transforming you. So we want to know this morning that we have a friend. We have a friend in Jesus, and he sticks closer than a brother. And we can tie that into the scripture in John 15, verses, uh, uh, let's start in verse, well, we can go back up to 7. But read the whole entire 15th chapter of John. I'm going to start with, um, oh, let's start with verse 9. Because, see, we... We talk about walking with God and God talking with us. And then we see the example he put in the word that when people are in a position they can't walk, they have palsy, that, that, that means they couldn't carry themselves. They couldn't, be, they couldn't make, it to, make it to a place themselves. But they had four friends. And I always think about you put the four friends at the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because all of them represent Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And Mark is a, Christ as the lion and as the ox and as the son of man which we just saw he said the son of man has power thank you Jesus. and the eagle so if christ is portrayed in all the scriptures y'all so now in this book in john which is the book that flies the banner of the eagle he says in verse 10 if you abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you herein is my father glorified that you 
ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. And the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even we talked about the love yesterday. You know, I talk about the love we the surrounding us, okay? And uh if you abide in me and um Ye, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken to you, that my joy might remain in you. We talked yesterday about his peace and his love and his joy. And if we abide in his word, his joy will remain in us, that your joy might be full. This is my commandments, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, than a man laid down his life for his friends. Going back to the word friends, as we just learned in Mark, okay? And he's talking about fellowship. Thank you, Jesus. Fellowship. And there is a one that sticks closer than a brother. That's God. He says, uh, a man laid down his life for his friend. You are my, my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you. So this is walking in Two agreeing. Thank you, Jesus. Walking together. And it doesn't always mean he's going to be in your family. You may have people in your family that are not friends. They're not friends with you. They're not friendly to you at all. And a lot of times you see there's going to be uh, issues in family. Jesus said, I came to bring a sword. You know, so we're looking for that relationship that God's talking about. The one he had with Abraham. The one he said to his disciples, you are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you. Okay, which means you're walking in fellowship, you're walking in harmony, two agreeing. Okay, henceforth, he said, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Now, this relationship is closer than a brother. He said, "What he, I call you friends in the things I've heard from my father, I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain. And that whatsoever you shall ask of my father in my name, he may give it to you. Okay. Now it clearly says, henceforth, I call you not servants. So he was walking with them beginning and they were just servants. But he says, from now on, <laughs> you're not just a servant of mine. You're my friend. Thank you, Jesus. We want to be a friend. I am a friend of God. I, he called me friend. That's a level because he said henceforth. So that before, they was just there as servants, okay? Now he said, I'm calling you friend. And the friends, he said, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you a little bit more. So we can be on the level of serving God, but then we want to move into the realm and the realm of God where he are uh, friends. Like he said, should I keep this from my friend Abraham? So we, and we, we thank you, Jesus. See, this is coming to me. We talking about everybody know every the, the exact same thing. That's not true. Because even when he went to the God, he had his disciples and then it took three, which is closer, and they went further with him. He took those three up to the mountain, okay? And he clearly said the reason here. Because some of them is, is servants. Uh, and the servant knows not what his Lord is doing. So you try to figure out, well, what is God doing? You're not even a servant yet. And then you have the, uh, and this is on the human side, okay? The, the, the uh, gall. To say, what is God doing? You're not even his servant. And the servant, he said, uh, knows not what his Lord is doing. But he says he's calling them friends now. And because then he said, I have all the things that I have heard of my father. I may have made, I have made known unto you. And that means this rhema word and right now word, you got to walk close to God. You got to be a friend of God. Otherwise, you're just serving him. That's what this is telling me. Okay. But I'm going back to the problem, to the situation about what a friend is. And, he, and Christ is a friend. He's clearly telling us in uh, John 15, beginning at the 7th verse, down to uh, 16 verse. Okay. Okay. We're taking our time with this. <laughs> okay. And then we see um, when it comes to bitter times, it made me go to Exodus, okay? When life gets bitter, 
When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. Uh oh. When the storms of life, uh, the, the tune is not is leaving me, but it's a song saying, "When the storms of life are raging, stand by me, stand by me, stand by me." Hallelujah! And maybe the Lord will bring me the tune back before we end, because when things get hard, you need to have a friend who stick closer than a brother. And in Christ, clearly, they said we can be His friend when henceforth we can be serving Him, but then we can walk closer. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, if you please. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Jesus. That song is coming. Just a closer walk. Just a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, if you please. And so God can bring us closer to him and tell us things that his father is telling him. Okay. Now, everybody's thinking we all equal, okay? We're all equal when it comes to getting saved. We all need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. We all need to repent of our sin. We all need to forsake sin. We all need to prevent, present our bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable. We all need to, to give God the praise. Thank you, Jesus. We all, there's a lot of things we all need, but clearly you can see here. When we get closer, just the closer walk with thee. And so we're going to see. But in the times of trouble, we're going to see in Exodus, the 15th chapter. And I want to talk about these waters, how God can change our circumstances. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus, the 15th chapter, verses 22 to 25. And it says, um, And Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they... Were, went three days into the wilderness and found no water. Three days. We got this three days again. See, this three days, and this is a time when they're being tested on the, this third day. Thank you, Jesus. And see, when we talk about Jesus being the, the one who rose on the third day, who brought in the, 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 the promises of God and the rest of God, here they are at a place now on the third day and there is no water. It's not by chance. God is directing them. You know, he was leading them by the pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day. So he knew where they were going. Okay. God clearly knew which way they go. Now they're at a place of testing and there is no water. And when they came to, uh, uh, and Moses brought Israel by the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shu. And when they had gone three days into the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of the place is called Myra, and the people murmured. When they came to this place and they couldn't get any water, they began to murmur against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? They got, you see, the attitude was coming out now, okay? The attitudes are coming out, coming out of the soul, the attitude, okay? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast it into the waters, hallelujah, and see this tree, Talking about the bitter waters and my, he God showed him a tree. You think he just by chance to say, take this tree? Okay, no, no. Okay. It's not by chance. He said, take this tree and cast the tree into the waters. The waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. So it was testing. And it, it, it came up with the word Jehovah Rapha. Rafi. Okay. And it says, and he said, if thou would <coughs> diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, which Jesus just told us in John, if you would listen to me and obey my voice, then you'll be my friends. Okay. But now we see here, if thou would diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which the Lord have brought uh, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, and I am the Lord that healeth thee. I'm the Lord that healeth thee, okay? Rafi, which is going back to the one we saw in the mark, where the friends was taking him. So God is the one who healing us. Hallelujah. And so we see here by talking about these waters, he cast the tree into the waters, okay? And they were made, um, they were made sweet, now, this tree is not by chance because we're going to talk about the waters where Jesus shows us in the book of John. Go back to the book of John, the fourth chapter, where the woman, which 
The reason I use her is because, see, the Samaritans had gotten in a bitter place. They had gotten in a rebellious place. They had gone, when God divided the 12 tribes, the 10 tribes went up to the north to Samaria. And they began to do their own thing, their own form of worship. They made people into the priesthood who wasn't even supposed to be priests. Okay? They wasn't even from the tribe of, of Aaron. They was not even from the sons of Aaron. They were not even from who God had called. And they made them in positions as priests. Okay? Like a lot of people become pastors. They're not even, you know, let me go on off. But let's go back to um, um, <clears throat> John, the fourth chapter about the woman who is a Samaritan. Okay. I'm just giving you a little background on the Samaritan and what kind of people they were. And the Jews who was down there in Jerusalem had nothing to do with the Samaritan. Okay. That's a long time between the 10 tribes and the two tribes. And they divided because they off into heathenism and we down here to the law. Okay. But then Jesus made a point to go by Samaritan. It was needful for me to go through Samaria. That's what he said. It was important for me to go through Samaria. So I got to deal with my children who are out there and rebellious and stubborn. Okay. The fourth uh, chapter of John, beginning at the fourth verse. Uh, and it says, and Jesus left with the third verse. And he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must need go through Samaria. Okay. He must need go through Samaria. And I put down Deuteronomy 8. Uh, <clears throat> verses 13. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which was called Sisha, Sisha, near to the parcel of land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. So that they're uh, 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 abiding in territory that was given to Joseph, which we, we can go back and see that. Uh, how did Joseph get this parcel of land? And now these Samaritans in Jesus' current time in, on the earth, they are over there, and they have the, we're going to see. And now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey set thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour, okay? And there cometh a woman of Samaria, of Samaria and drew water. And Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. So now he's, he said, I must go over there and deal. So he's dealing with this woman who's a Samaritan, and she asks him, I'm not going to read all of it. You know, the, the Jews have nothing to do with us. And Jesus answered and said unto her, um, Thus this woman of Samaria uh, said unto her, How is it that thou being a Jew, you being a Jew, which means from the Judah, okay, from the southern tribes, ask me for water. Now all of them started out, everybody, as one, okay? The 12 tribes under David was united. And when Solomon inherited from David, they were united. But Solomon's sin caused a breach. Caused a breach. In the whole family of God. Thank you. He caused a breach. And God took the current kingdom and rented from Solomon two tribes, hallelujah, with Judah and Benjamin. And the rest of them were sent off. See, they were one. But now it said in years past. Years passed. They had not been reconciled. But Jesus is there talking to the woman of Samaria. Okay. And, um, and she said, how is that the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans? And Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who is it that's talking with thee? If you knew who I was, if you knew the gift, and he, he relates himself to being the gift, because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If, you, if thou knewest the gift of God, He's letting you know that he is the gift of God. He said to the woman, if you knew the gift, which Isaiah prophesied, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And, and, and so he said, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew, he said, hallelujah, who is it that said to thee, give me drink? If you knew the gift of God and if you knew who was so far talking to you, thank you, Jesus. If you knew who I was, which is the, he is the gift. Grace is the gift of God. Thank you, Jesus. He is the gift. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah clearly said, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. That's why, Jesus, if thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him, and he would give thee the living water. Thank you, Jesus. And the woman says, sir, thou, there's nothing. So they talk about nothing. to do. But Jesus dropped down. This is the same chapter, verse 4. Because a lot of interaction is going on there, okay? Thou, um, he's, she says to them, from whence is this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? 
what which gave us this well and drank thereof and and his children and his cattle. She looking back at the ancestors. Jacob drank from this world. Are you greater than Jacob? But he just told her, if you knew the gift. Just the word gift alone. She could have run through her reference and knew the scriptures. Gift. Well, what did God speak about gifts? What, did, what, what is the word gift? He's relating himself to the gift. So we got to go back and see, when did God bring the word gift into his writings? When he said, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The gift of God. And even talk about the gift of God is eternal life. Our, the gift of God comes through Christ. The gift is the gift, is salvation. Even the Holy Spirit is given as a gift. He is a gift. Thank you, Jesus. And then it says, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall never thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the wa of that water that you, the, from the well, that I, um, the whosoever drinketh of the water from the well that she's at shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I will give shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water. You can look up that scripture too. Like a well of water in my soul. He's like a well of water in my soul. Spring it up unto everlasting life. Okay. So we're talking about this water. And we saw in Exodus, he took the tree. God told him, take the tree and put it in the water. Don't you know the tree? Hallelujah. When Christ was on the cross, he was hung out on the tree. And the waters talking about when you see in Revelation, when you see the waters, it means the whole part, world, the all the people, the waters, the beasts coming up out the waters. Thank you, Jesus. Then it's coming up out the world. Thank you, Jesus. But the tree was put into the waters. Okay? And it turned the waters sweet. Thank you, Jesus. Now we see in Psalms 18, 16. Okay. This gets got a little bit more because we're dealing with friendship and Christ bringing us closer than just servants. I mean, they, he said we is friends if we do what he say, okay? And then the friends will know more than the servant, okay? Uh, Psalms eighteen sixteen. The Lord is known by the judgment. Oh, I got the wrong one. Psalms 18. Let's go. Let's, let's not go too fast. Long Psalms 18, 16. And it says, uh, this is what David says, talking about waters. Uh, I want to go back up. This is important because we talk about, um, he drew, a, he talk about the waters being, the bitter waters being made sweet. David says here, the Lord has thundered in heaven. And the highest gave his voice, hail storms and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings and discomforted them. The channels of waters were seen. See, when you talk about these waters, he turning those bitter waters because God is talking about. Read the whole Psalms 18. It's a lot in there. Okay. It says, God, uh, the channels of waters were seen and the foundations of the world were discovered at the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast of his breath of his nostrils, which we know the Red Sea. God just blew his nostrils. He just opened up and then the Red Sea parted itself. He sent forth above and he took me and he drew me out of many waters. Okay. God drew him out of many waters. And it's talking about the times when trouble come. And there's another scripture we're going to um Let's go to Isaiah, and then we're going to go to Samuel. Maybe, well, we're in the Old Testament. Let's go back to Samuel. The reason we're trying to make sure that we search the Scriptures, searching the Scriptures, you know, not just reading it, we're searching the Scriptures with the unction of the Holy Spirit to help us to understand what it means when, when you're in bitter, bitterness. And we saw what the, the one's friends took him to Jesus. And Jesus said, there's one that's closer than a brother. And he, Jesus being our burden bearer, okay? Second Samuel two seventeen, and he sent he sent from above and took me and drew me out of minty waters. Okay, this is what David said when David said when he prayed. I need to go back to the verse. Um, he bolded. I called unto the Lord. Read. This is about that King David. We always use David because David is a worshiper. 
Okay. David said, when I called on the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. When the waves of death compassed me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Talking about water show. The sorrows of hell compassed me by the snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called unto the Lord and he and cried unto the Lord and delivered me and heard my voice out of the, his temple. And my cry, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And my cry did enter into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled and the foundations of, the, of heaven moved and shook because he was wrought. There went up a smoke out of his nostril, fire out of his mouth, devoured, coals of fire kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. And he, he hallelujah, he was seen upon the wings of the wind. And he made darkness prev pavilions round about him and dark waters and thick clouds of the sky. And through the brightness uh, before him were coals of fire kindled, and the Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. He sent out arrows and scattered them, and lightning, and discomfited them. The channels of the sea appeared, and the foundations of the world was discovered. At the rebuke, hallelujah, of the Lord, at the blast of the breast of his nostril. This is a person who is a friend of God. And he said, didn't Jesus say of you is his friend? He gave the parable, but the people made sure they get your friends. Hallelujah. You're not going to leave your friend in trouble. And Jesus said, you are my friends. Okay. If you do whatsoever I say. And he sent from above and he took me and drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me. Thank you, Jesus, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. Thank you, Jesus. This is a warfare thing here. Okay. Psalm, uh, I, uh, Samuel, the 22nd chapter. I mean, this is warfare, okay? Because you see here, God is my rock. Thank you, Jesus. You can de declare the word of God, okay? He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, has he recompensed me. For I have kept the way of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. Which is going back to Jesus said, you my disciples, if you do whatsoever I say. Okay? Okay. I was also upright before him and have kept myself from my iniquity, kept myself from my sins. Okay? Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness of in his eyesight. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. And with the upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the forward, thou wilt show thyself unsavory. The afflicted people thou wilt save. But thine eyes are upon the haughty, that thou, that thou mayest bring them down. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. Read on down, okay? Read all of that because this is a victory that through the warfare of being overwhelmed. And, and, and it's talking about when you go through the waters and, and they will not overtake you. Okay. So we're going to go now to Isaiah and they think that's how we're going to uh, close out. Isaiah 43. Because when you see, see God, we have to make sure that we are a friend of God. Okay. We can be his servant. And his servants don't even know what God is doing. Yeah, I'm just giving you instruction. Do what I tell you to say. Okay. But when you become a friend, you get closer. He gets closer to you. Isaiah 43. And this is how we're going to close. Thank you, Jesus. 43. Um, 43. Uh, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, and they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. And I gave, I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore, I will give men for thee and people for thy life. Listen, we, I need to have some more blood. I'm going to get the people over there. <laughs> I'm gonna get the people. I would, he said, didn't he say, I have loved thee, therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, I am with thee, 
and I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. And I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Uh, bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Every, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. This is a people that, and he said he's going to give people for their life. There's a lot of people dying because he said, we need a blood sack. We need some blood. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I will give men for thee and people for thy life. You talk about God's way. You say, they'll never know what God do. Okay. Why does God say, listen, when he said to, uh, to his uh, uh, service in the Old Testament, go there and slay everything, even the cattle. And don't take anything. They all, it, so, so what we remember why does God want that at times? Okay. Now, when he comes to us, he said, I'm going to give Egypt as a ransom, Ethiopia and Sebia. And, and, and since you're precious in my sight, he said, don't fear. Hallelujah. I will, I will give men for thee. What, is the, what does God need to purify? And remember, without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sin. And so why does God, why did he want the bulls? Why did he want that? So, okay, so we're trying to understand the mind of God. What, what, what is God doing? We, we, he done told us we're his friends and he will let us know some stuff if we're his friends. Okay, if you're just serving him, go back to the book of John. Okay, uh, 7 through 16. If you just is, is a, a, a servant, you're not going to know everything. That's what scripture is saying. So listen, but I like this morning because he sure told me about the friend and the people carrying the people, carrying this man in Mark. And he said, I will carry you. And he told him, I will bear you on eagle's wind. I will carry you. Thank you, Jesus. I will carry you. Thank you, Jesus. And he even told us here in Isaiah, and I'm going to give uh, other people for uh, sacrifice. Now, this is God. Okay. So we're going to close out and be thanking God that he is a friend. I am a friend of God. He called me friend. So God is calling you friend and not just a servant. We want to move on from just being a servant to being a friend of God. Okay. And friend, a friend that stick is closer than a brother. God can be your friend if you obey him, he said. And if you're not obeying him, you're not his. He said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh You're not my friend. You're just my servant. I, and I call the Babylonian head of uh, Babylon uh, a servant of mine. So he called a lot of people servants because he used whoever he wanted. He can use whoever he wants to, okay? But we're looking forward to being a friend of God like Abraham, okay? Let's close out. Father, we thank and praise you for this word, and we truly want to walk with you. Uh, I want to walk with the Lord and talk with the Lord. We want to be friends. We want to be close to you. We yield to you our body, soul, and spirit. Help us again, give us an obedient heart and to yield the spirit to the Holy Spirit. Those who are led by your spirit are the sons of God and the daughters of God. We thank and praise you, Lord. Help us to walk close with you and not to be just in service, oh God, and not realize we need a relationship with you. Not only that, an obedient relationship that we will obey your voice and hearken to, hallelujah, what your Holy Spirit is telling us. We yield to you our body, soul, and spirit. Go, Father, in the very depths of our soul. Anything that's not right, and everything that's not like it, Lord, take it out. We renounce every hidden sin and fault, Lord God. Thank you. Give us a clean heart. Renew within us the right spirit as we yield to you our body, soul, and spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray and count it done. So this is talking about being friends. And see what friends do. Mark, John, yeah, and, and Jesus said, uh, the, the servant don't know what his Lord is doing. But the friends do. Because he's going to tell the friends what his father tells him. Okay, we're talking about on a different level. Okay. So let's close out. Father, we thank and praise you. We are examining ourselves in the light of your word. And if we have fallen short away from you, help us to get back and strive. How can two walk together except they agree? Help us, God, to be in agreement to your Holy Spirit and to walk with you hand in hand and heart in heart and yield our body, soul, and spirit to you. We thank you for this word this morning. Help us to understand that it's not just a service. Oh, God, but it's a fellowship and, and, and yielding to, with you that we might walk close to you. Just a closer walk with thee is what we're praying for. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Remember every soul that comes on this YouTube channel. Every single soul, Lord God, by praying that your divine purpose and plan will be done in them and through them. Hallelujah. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. For we pray that thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth, in earth, O God, as it is in heaven. As we commit ourselves into your hands, in Jesus' name we pray and count it to Amen. Amen. The reason I'm rushing you is because we have another prayer group coming. And then we, of course, we have breakfast to cook. <laughs> we have little things. Praise God. But I'm thankful this morning for reminding me what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs he bears. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Everything. Be blessed. Remember, I'm going to give you these scriptures, okay? Now, Mark, second chapter. John, the 15th chapter, beginning at the 7th verse, okay? And then how Christ uh, was taking the bitter and turning it into sweet. He is can turn... Our morning, I got some more scriptures that I had with so you're turning our morning into dancing. So there were some more scriptures that I had when how he would change the circumstances. So he said, if you go through the water, it will not overtake you. Neither the fire, neither will it be a kindled upon you. So he is, when we are walk close to him as the Hebrew boys, they were walking around. They wasn't bound. See, we're talking about a living God. And if you don't have any friends, God will be your friend. You stick close to him, okay? Be blessed and push the like button. Encourage somebody to come along. In Jesus' name, continue to study to show yourself approved to God. Work on that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And become humble. The, the more you get close to God, the hum more humble you have to be, really. <laughs> because he does not, he resists the proud and give grace to the humble. And we thank him for the grace in our lives. Be blessed and walk in victory in Jesus' name.